Hi, I'm Doug Oster from the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Welcome to Digging with Doug. And today I'm joined by Michelle McCann. Michelle, welcome to the garden. Hey, Doug. How are you? And you're with? Collective Efforts. It's a civil and environmental engineering firm in the North Hills. And what do you do there? I'm a landscape architect. We do site design, stormwater management. Uh, Michelle and I met when she worked at Phipps. And then she, before that, she was at Longwood, which is one of the greatest gardens in the country. Well, we've got a real disaster here, <laughs> and uh, I, I need your help. Yes, you do. It looks like the green monster lives here. <laughs> that's that's bindweed. Just just this bindweed is is killing me. We did some weeding a couple of weeks ago with it, uh, but I want to completely redo this bed. Uh, every summer, no matter what I do, it ends up looking like this. I want to redo the whole thing. I want to tear out the the garbage that's in here, uh, but there are some things I want to keep in here. Okay. Uh, there's these old-fashioned peonies here, and these peonies, when they bloom. Uh, they bloom at the same time that this rhododendron does back here, and they have the same sort of shade, the same kind of color, like a pinkish white. Okay. Uh, so they look good together. But other than that, all I've done in here, this soil's never been improved, and all I've ever done in here is just kind of stick plants in. When I had some, you know, extra plant, I would just throw a, a sun lover in here. So at this point, I don't know what to do. <laughs> okay, well, I think you mentioned that this is one area of your garden that does get the most sun. Right. Since you're mostly in the wooded shade. Okay, so we want to take advantage of that, being able to have plant material that you wouldn't be able to grow in other portions of the garden. Um, also, just about this space, how is this space utilized? I see there's a pool area above us and a garden behind, and what's be This is my here? little secret hideout back here. <laughs> there's just a, uh, a whole woodland floor filled with ferns, and I just have one little chair back in there. I would kind of like this to end there. Okay. And that bee that remains secret okay. uh, back behind there. Uh, and then this area is basically kind of just a walkthrough. Uh, we use it for a running trail. And then this pool, I want to block this pool too. I can't stand seeing it. Okay. And I was thinking some kind of fencing up there. Uh, but I want to be able to see out of the pool to the garden. Okay. My plan is to basically take out everything except the peonies uh, and start from scratch. I want to... Uh, bring in lots of compost, uh, also then cover the whole thing with thick layers of newspaper and then mulch above that and then just plant through that. Okay. Uh, that's the only way I think I'm going to beat this bindweed. All right, when looking at the bed, I see that there's some campanula, there's some daylilies, and what about that Rose of Sharon up there? Well, that's an important tree because that came from my old garden. Uh, you know, Rosa Sharon is a very common tree, and people actually try and get rid of them. <laughs> but it has so many memories for me. My kids are grown now, 23, 24, and 20. And so uh, they played underneath that tree. So it has a lot of memories for me, and I, I, it reminds me of my old garden. Okay, so sentimental value. Yeah, the peonies basically run back along uh, the end of the bed. Okay. And uh, those are the main plants that I want to save. Well, what we'll need to do is, um, I've taken some notes, and we need to do some site measurements just so okay. that I know how big the bed is. And um, I know you're going to be busy tearing everything out, but while you're doing that, I'll get busy working on the design for the perennials. Ready to measure? Ready to measure. All right, let's see what we have here. And we want to be All able right. to get uh, to the steps. 28. 28 feet, okay. If I stay right here where the uh, 10 foot was to the center of the hibiscus wall. This is the top of the bed. Okay, so it's about 11 feet there. What I'd like to be able to do, especially since you have a secret garden back here, is we've got this area that we can work with. I think it'd be nice to do something on the exterior side of this fence to help define this particular space. We could put a terminal piece here and give the illusion that this ends and that'll help to make your space even more okay. secret. If we do get our fence up here, you want it to somehow tie into this fence, which right, is something, I'm, again, I didn't think about as a non-design person. Yeah, I'm thinking that there's an opportunity to be able to mirror that, to give a little bit of symmetry. Um, it's not going to quite be divided in the middle, but it would be a repetition of a design element. So now we've got the hard work. We've got to tear this apart. Uh, thanks you so much oh, for, no for your time. Thank you. Uh, you want to stay and help? I do not. <laughs> All right, let's <laughs> go. get back to work. All right. Okay, we got our garden clothes on and we're ready for the big dig. <laughs> I'm actually really looking forward to doing this job. Uh, it's many years I've waited to get this done. Uh, and we'll see how long it takes. Uh, this trash can, of course, everything we pull out of here will not be going to the curbside. This is just so I can hold it all together. And I have got an area over here next to the compost bin where all the weeds get composted. So let's get to work.
question is, how many times will we fill this up? That's one can. You know, I have a real nostalgic feeling for my plants, a real affinity for them, but sometimes you just got to rip them out. Uh, this is the first time I've really had to do anything like this, but I couldn't stand it any longer. And it's funny, the things that you find, <laughs> here's a pair of socks. My daughter, who's now 20, these look when she was about 11. So <laughs> they've been in that bed for that long. Uh, so everything is coming out except this big hosta. And you can tell from this bed already, it's, it's going to look so much better, and I, I, I'm so glad to get it done. Is that five? I think I lost count. One more. Okay, that's the end of it. It was not that bad of a job, although I'm not as young as I used to be, especially after that job. Uh, but next week, we're going to continue this renovation. We're going to put uh, compost and uh, whatever good organic matter we can find all through these beds, cover that with newspaper to stop the weeds, and then see what Michelle has in store for us. Now remember, if you'd like some more information about what we're doing here today, or if you've got a garden question, log on to www.post-gazette.com front slash homes, click on the gardening forum button, and I'd be glad to answer all your questions, and like I said, there's more information about what we're doing here today, but now I'm going over to my secret hideout, and I'm going to sit for a while. Ah. Done. Okay, and that newspaper works really well. I've used that at home and haven't had any problems with it. It's a great way to recycle the newspaper. After you read the column. You have to read my column okay. first, all right? <laughs>